Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Youssef. A telephone call was held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Majesty expressed his wishes of continued progress, prosperity, security, and stability for the UAE and its people under the leadership of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. His Majesty hailed the televised speech of His Highness, which expressed the wise policy of the UAE under the leadership of His Highness in consolidating and strengthening partnership, dialogue, and effective and balanced relations based on trust, credibility, and mutual respect with other countries to achieve stability and prosperity for all. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his efforts in developing bilateral relations, wishing the people of Bahrain further progress and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty the King. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Vice President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and provider of the idea for the Bahraini Football Centenary book, Sheikh Adaij bin Salman Al Khalifa, who presented His Highness with a copy in the presence of the CEO of the General Sports Authority, Dr. Abdul Rahman Askar, and the Acting Assistant and Under Secretary General of this CYS, and the book's editorial board, Marwan Fuad Kamal. His Highness affirmed that Bahrain has an outstanding football history and has made remarkable achievements throughout the years, noting the importance of the Kingdom Sports March. He stated that the book will be a remarkable addition to the Sports March, hailing the efforts of Sheikh Adaij and the editing board. Sheikh Adaij expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness for his continuous support and added that the book will demonstrate the development march of football to present and future generations. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, met with the Director General of Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, Mohammed Saif Al Suwaidi, and Acting Director General of Abu Dhabi Export Office, Khalil Fadl Al Mansouri, in the presence of the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication, Mohammed Al Kabi, the Minister of Works, Ibrahim Al Hawaj, and the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yasser Ahmedan. The Minister signed two agreements between Bahrain and the ADFD worth $41 million, and ADEX at the value of $51 million to finance the project to develop water transmission networks associated with the second phase of a door station in Bahrain. Sheikh Salman emphasized the deep-rooted Bahrain-UAE relations and their continuous development as a result of the special interest accorded by the leaders of the two countries. He noted the importance of developing infrastructure projects that constitute a fundamental pillar in promoting development and achieving sustainable economic growth headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Suwaidi noted that the agreement embodies the keenness of the fund to support development projects and plans in various fields and the effective contribution to developing Bahrain's economic and social march. On the sidelines of the visit of the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development Delegation and the Abu Dhabi Export Office to the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, Director General of the ADFD, Mohammed Saif Suwaidi, and Acting Director General of the Abu Dhabi Export Office, Khalil Fadl Mansouri, visited a project expansion of Sheikh Zayed Road funded by the ADFD. The Minister said that the implementation of the first phase of the project to expand Sheikh Zayed Road affirms the depth of bilateral cooperation. He praised the support provided by the UAE to projects that advance development in Bahrain. The delegation were briefed on the new expansion as it is one of the most strategic projects on the main road network in the kingdom. The minister said that the expansion made on Sheikh Zayed Road have contributed to alleviating traffic congestion by increasing the capacity of the street by about 57% after the expansion. 
The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, conducted an inspection visit to East Head Town. The minister said that work on the infrastructure projects at East Head Town is near completion, with 95% of residential scheme already completed, adding that the massive development project is expected to be completed during the last quarter of this year. She announced that work on the construction of the apartment buildings will start during this quarter, noting that the project would feature apartment buildings with all facilities and services. Ramehi stated that construction of 1,873 housing units has been completed and handed over to citizens out of the total number of the planned units. She noted that the ministry handed over 529 housing plots in the project, adding that 60% of the beneficiaries have started construction work. She stressed the government's keenness on promoting social housing projects and programs, adding adopting initi innovative initiatives and solutions that ensure the speedy access of citizens to adequate housing. A delegation from the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development visited a number of ADFD finance projects in Salman Town. As part of the Gulf Development Program, including apartment buildings and infrastructure schemes, Housing and Urban Planning Minister Amnel Romehi commended the UAE support to projects that aim to achieve sustainable development, which reflects the deep-rooted fraternal relations between Bahrain and the UAE. She expressed thanks and gratitude to ADFD officials for their keenness on following up on ADFD finance development projects. The Undersecretary, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamoud Al Khalifa, shed light on one of the key projects financed by the fund, featuring 16 residential towers made of 1,382 apartments. The delegation made an inspection visit to construction sites in the city as well as the infrastructure and secondary sites that were completed under the supervision and follow-up of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning. The World Health Organization has launched a case study documenting the Kingdom of Bahrain's successful response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The study specifically details the Kingdom's extensive efforts put in place to combat the spread of the disease and highlights the best practice examples and lessons learned from the pandemic. It is a role model, I would say. With all the experiences that the uh, world had with uh, dealing with uh, COVID-19, Bahrain stands out as one of the best uh, practice kind of experience mm -hmm. because we, we cover all the aspects. I will say we had this ideal public health action that we did during the um, COVID-19. We started early, we plan, we prevent, we did establish testing centers. All, all of these actions were um, harmonized in a way the dynamic of um, doing this where though it was centralized but at the same time it was harmonized in within the government within the society the engagement of everybody the information of this case study will further stress the fact that healthcare remains a priority for the government of Bahrain and that the commitment at the highest political levels were vital to the success of Bahrain's COVID-19 response under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the constant follow-up of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The leadership uh, was the success uh, or the key uh, to to, the, to have this success story. We uh, uh, established the task force, the national task force, early on before at least the three to four weeks before the first case of uh, COVID-19 um, uh, diagnosed in Bahrain. And from that day, we prepare as a team. And if I'm referring to we, as I always refer to Bahrain team, we prepared ourselves for the next cases because we knew it will come definitely to Bahrain. So the task force sta established, the preparedness uh, started. This is Sarah Lebrek reporting for Bahrain International. The launch of the case study documenting Bahrain's strategic response to the pandemic by the WHO reflects the outstanding efforts of the kingdom to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic and its repercussions. To speak more about that, we have with us over the phone the WHO representative and head of office in Bahrain, Dr. Tasneem Atatra. Hello, Dr. Tasneem. Can you tell us about the significance of the WHO's selection of Bahrain as a case study and success story in dealing with the pandemic? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Bahrain launched a report documenting its strategic response to the COVID-19 pandemic and showcasing how the country managed to overcome critical challenges through preparedness and early response. The unprecedented health crisis has shown that many health systems across the globe and the well-being of individuals and society across the world have been affected. But countries now have an opportunity to build back stronger by sharing and learning from the best practices to establish a new model of partnership in health emergency documentation and response. Under the wise leadership of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in Bahrain, and through the close coordination among the Ministry of Health and all concerned ministries and the Supreme Council for Health, Bahrain's response to the pandemic proved to be very timely, comprehensive, and successful. The presence of a WHO country office on the ground facilitated a three-level mission of WHO staff members from the country office, from the regional office, and from headquarters to produce a detailed account of Bahrain's operational strategy in containing the spread of the disease. Through this report, WHO seeks to increase communication and exchange of lessons learned among those working in the field of health emergency in the region and globally. The report is part of Bahrain's contribution to the exchange of global best practices to strengthen health emergency preparedness and response across borders. As the head of the WHO office in Bahrain, you've witnessed many developments in the past year. What are the enablers of success for Bahrain in the health sector, especially in dealing with COVID-19? Bahrain is one of the first countries to document the COVID-19 experience. Commitment at the highest political level was instrumental to the success of Bahrain's COVID-19 response. Under the leadership of His Royal Highness uh, and the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Bahrain managed to take significant strides to ensure the highest possible level of safety and maintain health and well-being for all citizens and residents even before the first case was detected. It shows that preparedness, leadership, and multi-sectoral collaboration are critical for a well-managed response to health emergency. Uh, a national task force uh, for combating uh, COVID-19 was promptly mobilized after the discovery of the novel virus. And when the first case uh, uh, of the infection in Bahrain was confirmed in the early morning of the 24th of February in 2020, the government moved quickly. All citizens and residents in Bahrain were given access to a free testing and treatment services. Prevention, preparedness and response activities were implemented swiftly across all sectors in a whole of government, whole of society, whole of community approach. Bahrain successfully contained the spread of the disease thanks to the early testing, highly high vaccination coverage, and the uh, continued provision of essential health services with a well-trained workforce. At the same time, Bahrain managed a number of challenges during its response, including repurposing the workforce, acquiring sufficient protecting equipment, and outreach to vulnerable population. Moreover, which was evident and outstanding is the commitment of the whole community where we saw a high number of volunteers and uh, coming to join the highly qualified professionals. Thanks to the government of Bahrain for sharing their experiences. We hope that the lessons from this experience will be useful to other countries in the region and globally. WHO representative and head of office in Bahrain, Dr. Tasneem Atatra, thank you for joining us. Thank you.